My name is Dr. Roger McFillin. I'm a clinical psychologist and host of the Radically Genuine podcast. In a startling development last May, the FDA extended the approval of the SSRI drug, escitalopram, otherwise known as Lexapro, to include children aged seven and older who report anxiety. This coming from a study where researchers randomly assigned 275 children ages 7 to 17 diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder to one of two groups, those receiving Lexapro and those provided a placebo. The trial spanned only eight weeks. The results? On a 30-point PARS-GAD anxiety scale, a statistically significant mean difference of only 1.42 points was observed between the drug and placebo groups. This small finding formed the basis for the FDA's approval. On the other three outcome measures, there was no discernible contrast between the groups in response to the drug, remission from anxiety, or overall functioning. In other words, an equivalent number of children, whether on the drug or placebo, experienced cl clinical significant improvement or the absence or reduction of anxiety. Additionally, the drug did not improve overall functioning. However, 9.5% of the children who took Lexapro became suicidal, whereas only 1.5% of those in the placebo group experienced such feelings. An incredible six-fold increase. Despite this, the author's conclusions boldly asserted that Lexapro is well tolerated in pediatric patients with generalized anxiety disorder. It's clear from the data, children and adolescents exposed to Lexapro were more likely to become suicidal than to experience any meaningful improvement in anxiety. So it raises the question, who are these individuals? How does this happen? What ethical scientists would assert the safety and tolerance of a drug that could be fatal to young children who are merely experiencing anxiety? Well, the Journal of Child and Adolescent Psychopharmacology featured the recent study. Much like the prevailing trend in clinical drug trial reports, the authors of this study included employees of the pharmaceutical company, with the article being composed by Prescott Medical Communications Group, a medical writing company paid by that same company. In fact, this company, AbbVie, the pharmaceutical company that manufactures Lexapro, left no room for ambiguity, explicitly stating that it had complete control over all facets of the trial. They proclaimed, we funded this study and actively contributed to the study design, research, analysis, data collection, data interpretation, as well as the review and approval of the publication. The first author, Jeffrey R. Strawn at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center, although not affiliated with AbbVie or its contracted companies, is disclosed to have received research funding from AbbVie. Notably, authors Edward Greenberg, Chang Cheng Liu, and Malika Gopal Krishnan are direct employees of AbbVie. Meanwhile, authors Leslie Moldauer, Rebecca D. Hahn, Alexandra Wise, Christina Bertzos, and Beth Eisenberg are all employed by Cineas Health, a company financially supported by AbbVie to conduct the study. The paper's last author, James A. Knutson, is the owner of Core Clinical Research, another such company involved in the study. Author Molly McVoy received a grant from the Hartwell Foundation, which is dedicated to advancing bio biomedical interventions in children. Carol Brown, the Prescott Medical Communications employee who crafted the article, is conspicuously absent from the list of authors. Instead, she is credited for her writing and editorial assistance in a practice commonly associated with ghost authors. Despite the dramatic increase in suicide risk, their conclusions confidently declare the drug's safety and tolerability. This is the information that physicians will receive. They won't analyze the research paper to assess its design and statistics. Instead, they'll embrace the author's conclusions as firmly established scientific fact. They'll participate in conferences where the drug is advocated as a first-line treatment. They'll receive lunches, dinners, marketing material, and persuasive pitches from the pharmaceutical sales representatives. Some doctors even might brand individuals like me on social media as anti-psychiatry and anti-science. Because this paper was published in a prestigious journal, 
it will be upheld as indisputable truth. This is how falsehood spread. This is how a mental health crisis takes root. This is how innocent children lose their lives.